Hello everyone. Today is a surprise series. I don't know. I looked into this and I found it a lot deeper than what I first expected. It's Mark 11, 12 through 14. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. Talking about Yeshua. And seeing in the distance a fig leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. So what I noticed last time reading this, it says, For it was not the season of figs. And he cursed his fig tree. Why would Yeshua Jesus, why would Yeshua Jesus curse a fig tree if it wasn't the season for figs? So I had to look this up and, and do some research. And here is something that they note from an evangelical scholar. Another noted evangelical scholar, Craig S. Keener, makes the following observation. At Passover season in late March or early April, fig trees are often in leaf only in the eastern side of the Mount of Olives. At this time of year, such fig trees contained only green early figs. Arabs called them toks, which ripen around June but often drop off before that time, leaving only green leaves on the trees. A leafy tree lacking such early figs, however, would bear no figs at all that year. So the tree, because it makes sense, okay, Yeshua cursed the tree because it had, it had no fruit. Uh, that um, that it had no fruit when it was out of season, or when it was in season, but it was out of season, and he cursed his tree, which had no fruit. He it was out of season, and he cursed the tree, which had no fruit. But yet this explains that actual figs, the actual figs, are not to be there around that time, but detox. The fruit, the early fruit, the first fruit called tox is supposed to be there. And that's that's what the Arabs call them. If you look at specialtyproduce.com, they also call them breva fruit. It says the fruits are also known as breva, tox, and early figs. So breva fruit is what I'm going to use to do research. And is this is this very green fruit it's 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 a first fruit that comes before the fruit fig it turns into a fig but it is very early fruit so it makes sense that when Yeshua saw this saw that there was no breba fruits on it he knows that the tree will not bear any fruit at all for the rest of the time so watch this little video just just a lady talking about her her fruit and her breba fruit Watch, watch this little video. Hey, it's Enlightenment Garden. It is late April, and I'm going to talk to you about fig crops. So, all figs produce a main crop, which uh, generally ripens in the summer to fall, and the fruit is born on new growth. So, any kind of branching that occurs in the spring going forward is going to be fruit bearing for you. There are a few fig cultivars that also produce a breba crop and what that is is it's the first fruit to come out on the tree and it occurs on the old wood. So let's take a look at this to see what we're talking about. This is that uh, tiger panache. Actually, this cultivar is not supposed to produce a breba crop, but I see one. So when this tree first woke up in spring, I saw these two figs emerge on the old growth. This is two-year-old wood. As you can see, this is pretty close off the ground here. So I've got those two figs, and then I've got a plethora of figs in here that have produced on the new green branches that came out in spring. You can see the size difference, and that's because the main crop came out 
later than the Breba, about a month later, began forming. Did you see that? Did you see how the, the, the Breba fruit was growing on the old tree, the, 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 the old branches that were there last year? It wasn't the new ripe green branches. It was on the old branches. So this makes a lot of sense. The Lord is showing a fulfillment in prophecy at this time. So you look up Mark 13, 28. It explains in more detail what Yeshua literally explains why he cursed that fig tree. <coughs> so Mark 13, excuse me, Mark 13, 28. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So what does that mean? This is what I'm thinking it means. This is what I'm thinking it means. He is showing that the time for the Messiah is now. He says that also when you see these things taking place, when you know that the tree is tender and puts out leaves, you know that it's time is taking place. You know that he is near at the very gates. Yeshua is like, I have arrived. The time is now. There was only a particular time period that Yeshua could have came. And it had to be before the second temple was destroyed. Yeshua came, died, and around 40 years later, the temple, the second temple was destroyed. There was that particular time. That is when the Messiah has to come. If you wonder... About those in Tumal, Tumal, Talmudic Judaism saying that the Messiah hasn't come. Oh no, they have to use spoken word. They can't use written word to try and over explain why Yeshua wasn't the Messiah and how the Messiah could still come. No, he was supposed to come before the second temple was destroyed. And he did so. But not only that, why did he still curse this fig tree? Did you notice that the old branches, the old wood did not have Reba fruit? The old wood represents the Judaic system at that time. They had a form of godliness, but did not denied such power. They didn't have the fruit, the first fruit. They should have had the first fruit. And they didn't. So he cursed it. Yet there were other fig trees, were there not? There were. There were other Jews who did accept the Lord. The early Jews, the early believers, the disciples. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. These ones were indeed fig trees that had the bread of fruit. They saw that the whole fulfillment of the Old Testament was through Christ. And their fruit was real. And because of them, the Gentiles and things were able to be grafted in. As Paul talks, as talk, Paul, Paul talks, oh, but one more thing, because I want to show you this. One scholar talks about it, and he's kind of showing it's more in the temple. But yo, it isn't a temple, but it's bigger than the temple, right? One scholar says, the next morning, morning, presumably Tuesday of Passion Week, Jesus and his disciples on returning to Jerusalem from Bethany again passed a fig tree. It was totally destroyed, withered from the roots. Jesus had predicted that no one would ever eat fruit from it again. And Peter, remembering what Jesus had said, called his attention to the withered tree. Jesus does not explicitly interpret the event, yet the meaning seems clear. Jesus predicted judgment on the temple will come to pass as surely as did his prediction that the fig tree would wither. Yes, judgment on the temple, but not just judgment on the temple, judgment on that religious 
that religious Judaism that did not see that he was the fulfillment of prophecy. Judgment on that, those, the, the scribes and Pharisees at the time. But yet again, there was another fig tree. There were other fig trees. The other disciples who were still Israelites, who were still Jews, they realized that Yeshua was the fulfillment of all the prophecy, that he is the son of God. And they produced fruit. And because of them, Gentiles, we were, like, were able to be grafted in. If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, the first fruits, remember the, that wood and those first fruits that you saw out of that brebbe tree. Huh, but they're talking about olive tree. But just think about that too. If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, so is the whole lump. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. So the Lord once wanted a whole people that, that saw, the, that had the first fruits. He wanted those trees to go and continue out with the branches. But if some of the branches were broken off and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree. And that's the olive tree. But just think about the fig tree. Now we can share in the nourishing root of the fig tree. Do not be arrogant towards the branches. If you are, remember, it's not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. And this is talking about anti-Semitism and being racist towards the Israelites, the Jews, even the ones that haven't received Christ. Don't do that. The Lord's telling us not to do that. So, yeah. That was a big prophecy on the fact that Yeshua had arrived. Yet there's a few things that we can take from it for our day-to-day -day lives and, and who we are to be in Christ. And we will continue tomorrow on that dear heavenly father just thank you father thank you for for all your wisdom and all your words so that we understand what has happened in our world father just thank you we love you so much may many be saved in yeshua's name we pray amen goodbye